Diamond Painting Friends. Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder. Stopping in to do a little whip and chat today. Now you guys know I don't do a lot of whip and chats, but I, I have some people here on the channel who do like whip and chats, and so I like this to be a channel for everyone. And so for those of you who love whip and chats, I'm gonna do my best today to tell you some things that are not boring. But <laughs> my life is not thrilling. I just love to hang out with you. And so hopefully that's what it's all about. Just hanging out. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. I've got my There's Always Lipstick mug with my absolutely ice cold coffee in it because I've already been filming a couple of videos ahead today just because life is so busy right now and I wanna make sure that I always have some kind of content for you guys and so there's that. So I have really no rhyme or reason for the canvases I show in my whip and chats. Today I am doing Space Letterman 2 by Geneva Bowers via Distracted by Diamonds. I picked this one for one reason only and that is because it has pre-bag drills. <laughs> well, two reasons. The second is I love it. I love the artwork and I've decided I want to start smack dab in the middle of her face because life is too short to do all the background first all the time. You know what I'm saying? Life is too short to do the sensible thing all the time. So we're going to jump right into the middle of this canvas and do some work on it there. Now I meant to grab my Drills and Chills canvas to show you, so I'm gonna go grab it. This is Where Stars Come From by Jeremiah Morelli via DIY Moon Shop. I am, I'm loving, I'm loving it. I hope you guys are playing along with Drills and Chills. Be sure to check out K Diamond Paints for more info there if you're not sure what I'm talking about. But it's a Halloween event. I know this isn't strictly a Halloween canvas, but my plans were a bit turned upside down by COVID. And so this is the canvas that I am currently working on for Drills and Chills. I'm doing it with the level three, version three special treatment, and it is so fun. It is so fun because there's really an element of creativity to the special treatments that you don't always get when you're just putting down the drills that the symbols tell you to. So I'm having a lot of fun with this one. This is a 50 by 50. If you guys are interested in this canvas, so far, I highly recommend. And you can see I'm, I'm pretty close to being finished. This is going pretty fast, even though I don't have a lot of time right now. So I wanted to show you that real quick. All right, let's crank on. I've got my Elise rechargeable light pad going on here. I always flip through too many settings. <laughs> I have to count them or I'm just lost. I have so much stuff around me right now. I feel like my tools are just everywhere. But it's sort of like my life right now. My life is sort of everywhere. Not that it's anything really exciting, but I will tell you about it. So I pulled out a couple drills I knew I was gonna need in this section and labeled them. Like I said in one of my videos recently, there's not a kit with pre-bag drills in my stash that I haven't started, except for this one because it's the newest one. <laughs> so, so there you go. But we're gonna start it today. We're gonna fix that situation. I'm gonna load my pen up with Patty Wax Super Sticky. And just make sure I've got some good stick going on. It's been a while since I used this pen. One of my favorite pens from Jim's Handmade Pens on Etsy. All right, I'm gonna stick that, stick that Patty Wax Super Sticky back in a warm place. All right, I'm gonna start with some 310. <laughs> and I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on in the universe. So we started back to school a couple days a week. We're doing block scheduling here at the school that my daughters go to. And that means for me that my piano studio has opened, sort of. I'm back to teaching lessons online again, which 
I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely hate it. I dread it. I don't hate spending the time with my students. I love that, of course. But I absolutely hate sitting on the computer for 10 or 12 hours a day. I find it just super soul killing. So I've been at it, this is my third week now. The first week I was legit depressed. Like I was crying every day after I was done. Like this is not how I want to spend my life teaching lessons online. I just miss the connection with the kids so much. I miss things being easy. I miss being able to hear people when they talk all the time. I miss being able to hear the nuance in the music they're playing. And it's just, it's just not there online. I, I'm grateful that I can still do anything, that I can still make a living that way. Um, but man, oh man, it was a tough, it was a really tough week. The next week was a little better. I feel like this week is a little better again. It's one of those things, do you guys think like when, with hard circumstances, you can adapt to anything given enough time? <laughs> uh, and not that this is the hardest circumstance anyone has ever had. I'm not saying that by any stretch. But when things are stressful, things things can get easier with just a little bit of time and adjustment. And I hope that's going to be the case for me. Um, but yeah, I know we're all missing connections with people and and stuff like that and I I have to be extra careful to be honest because my mother lives with my family so we're a multi-generational household and normally I would have students coming to my house um, about 25 a week or so and so that just doesn't feel possible right now um, like I said I am grateful that I can make a living in all these various ways. Um, but it has been has been a, a tough little stretch here. So I'm sending you guys lots of love and if you can if you can reflect it back at me I <laughs> I need it a bit right now. Um, and then I think just Whenever school starts and my studio starts back up, there's sort of the sense of like the days are just too long and, and they really are long. I work at a lawyer's office during the day, most days, and then I come home and teach piano lessons online, now online, for another well for till well into the evening and then I try to get some exercise and I try to make YouTube videos um, because this was something I honestly started when I had a little more time and I don't want to give it up now that the channel is getting a little larger and I'm having even more fun with it to be honest now that there are um, just a lot of people out there I connect with and so I consider you guys my friends. I see a lot of your names over and over in the comments and I feel like you feel like you start to know people a bit after a while and I don't want to give that up even though it was sort of the latest addition to my work life. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's just been a lot to be honest. It's just been a lot lately. Um, and my daughters, they're adjusting to the, it's their senior year in high school, so they're adjusting to the situation to some degree, I would say, but my daughter, daughter A, <laughs> is really involved in the arts, so theater and, and public performance, art of that kind, and so... This was supposed to be sort of her capstone year for all of that. 
And of course, none of it is happening <clears throat> the way that we really hoped. There aren't going to be sort of those last final memories in the way that we were expecting. And I think maybe it's the expectation that gets you in trouble, you know. You were sort of expecting to go to all these capstone events in your kid's life. And that just looks very different than we thought it would. So, so there are some feelings of grief there, I would say. It's just, uh, it's a lot. And what's the point in not saying it's a lot, you know? I'm one of those people who tries to stay upbeat at all costs, but um, what can I say? It's... It's a hard time, and like I said earlier, I'm by far not having the hardest time that I could have with it, so, ooh, yeah, my compassion buttons get all kinds of triggered when I think about what a lot of people are going through out there. So that's kind of what's going on with us. <laughs> We're making it, but some days better than others, I would say. And like I said, I feel like I'm on a bit of an upward trajectory now, but it's been a hard couple of weeks to kind of settle into everything and how it's all going to look for a little while here. Um, some, some really bright spots, however, have been working with Robin on getting some new artists licensed and I'm excited to share news about that when I can. So that is always for me like a a really fun bright spot that I wish I had even more time to devote um, because I really found through this process that empowering artists and working with artists is something I really really enjoy. And that's something I find really powerful. Um, and so that has really been positive for me. And we are in full on autumn <laughs> now here in Montana. I'll tell you guys, if you, I know a lot of you are experiencing the wildfire situation. Holy cow. I I am sending so many bug hugs to my friends on the west coast. Because, especially because we have just been I mean, we are a long way from Oregon and a long way from California. And we have just been blanketed with smoke. It's been intense. Even here, it's been intense. And so that's why I say it's just even hard to comprehend how bad it must be over in Oregon and California. It's nuts. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. So, wowzers. It's finally clearing off a bit here now. We can see the mountains again for the first time in a, a number of weeks. So that feels really good. It sort of feels like now that these wildfires are so common where I live and where other people live here in the West, now that it's so common, it almost feels like our summer is about a month long because even though we live in all these, even though we have access to all these beautiful natural places, by the time August rolls around, I mean, May is still spring here. It's pretty cold sometimes still. Um, and it doesn't really get to be summer until June. And so June is usually beautiful. July, sometimes by the, sometimes by early July, we already have 
wildfires. And then it's just, it's just forest fire season the whole rest of the summer on years that are pretty rough. So this year has not been that rough. It didn't start that early, but man, oh man. Sometimes, sometimes it does start that early and you just feel like you lose the whole end of the summer. Um, because now it is in the, we're getting down into the twenties at night again, the twenties Fahrenheit. So yeah, September, September is usually autumn in Montana. Like it is, and not late September. Our first frost is usually early September. Um, so yeah, the, the wildfire situation is pretty intense. <laughs> it's pretty intense, um, for a lot of people right now. So I'm sending, sending big hugs to the families affected by that. It's kind of ironic that as I'm saying that, a, uh, <laughs> a helicopter is flying over, one of the uh, firefighting helicopters. It's going right over my head right now. Um, so I've been thinking a lot lately about something after I watched a documentary on Netflix. <laughs> and I hope this doesn't get too dark too fast. <laughs> But you guys know that I sort of like to talk about real stuff. I'm not so good at talking about like the weather for very long or, you know, God forbid I ever talk about any kind of celebrity gossip. If I do that, you guys know I've lost my mind. <laughs> anyway, um, I watched a documentary recently called The Social Dilemma on Netflix, and if you guys have not seen it, drop this video right now. Just leave right now, go over and watch it. You'll be so depressed, but I think it's one of the most valuable things I've seen in a long time. And it's, it, I wouldn't say it has any information that I didn't know already, but I think it was just a reminder of how crazy things are and how much social media has the power to tear us apart if we're not careful. That was really the takeaway that I got from it. Um, and then just sort of monitoring the technology addiction side of things. That was really eye-opening also. So I won't get into too much of the, the detail of the documentary if you want to go watch it, but it really was worth a watch. And the thing that it left me with on some level was a little bit of guilt, honestly, because one of the things it was talking about was how Platforms like YouTube and Facebook and Instagram are designed to suck people in and keep them on the platform for extended periods of time. And frankly, keep people listening to creators or content that is unvetted. So it may or may not be factual, but as long as it's entertaining, people will watch it. Of course. And so I found myself feeling a little bit guilty about even being a part of that whole machine, this whole YouTube machine. And so I've been thinking a lot about sort of where that line is with healthy and unhealthy media consumption. And I don't think, I don't think, <laughs> I try not to push a lot of like blatantly untrue things on my channel here. It's not really the purpose of the channel. 
This is more a channel for, of course, having fun with a hobby and being creative and crafting and connecting with people that way. So hopefully I'm not contributing in that sense, but it did really make me think like how much a part of that dynamic do I want to be and how do I make sure that my content is positive Anyway, I left it I left that documentary feeling a strong sense of responsibility for what I do on the channel and um just making sure that I'm always as honest as I can possibly be about the products I show because I think it's it's easy as just a person sitting by yourself talking to yourself in a room because that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm thinking about all of you, but technically I am by myself in a room talking to myself. It's easy to forget that what you say is actually heard by people and that they may take action on what you say if they so desire, but they may take action on what you say and base their behavior on it, or um, or they may be changed by it in some fashion. And I don't mean like I'm leading people around to doing or thinking things that they weren't already thinking and doing. I don't have that much power over anybody. But just a reminder that YouTube creators and influencers even if you're not very large as far as subscribers go, that you really do have the responsibility to be ethical in the way that you present your information. So that I felt like that was just a valuable reminder for me and also a good opportunity to think about what I'm doing and why and how. So if you have a chance to watch that, I really highly recommend it. And one of my big takeaways was, whoops, lost a drill there. Um, one of my big takeaways was to be careful about the time you spend on any platform that watches you back. <laughs> so, Yeah, and just, it reminded me to vet carefully, vet my information carefully, and not just listen to absolutely anyone's opinion. Um, because all opinions are valuable, but they're not all equally true. And so, just for myself, reminding myself to be a critical thinker and if I watch something and I'm, I am, or I encounter some bit of information, to always think that through and vet it carefully and check the sources and see if the person is credible or not. Um, anyway, so I do think YouTube has been valuable to me. I think this experience has been extremely valuable to me, um, and not chiefly monetarily because even though I get paid for making videos, it's not a, I would probably make more working at McDonald's than I make from my videos, but it's been valuable for me in the sense that um, I've learned a lot about myself and I've, I've been able to confront both some of my strengths and some of my weaknesses. So, um, watching yourself talk for hours and hours and hours is a pretty surreal experience. <laughs> and I think you notice all your verbal tics. You notice all of your idiosyncrasies. And so I think it's actually a really valuable exercise. I realized that I use the phrase super excited about 4 million times <laughs> in every video. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to change it. It's just, it is what it is. 
And I also have to say that I'm a pretty soft-spoken, um, sensitive person. And so being on YouTube and encountering some criticism, some of which is valid and some of which is just mean, has let me distinguish between those two things. And it's definitely given me a little thicker skin, you know, for the things that are just mean. They can just, they don't, mean comments don't just roll off you. I don't care who you are. Um, they do, they do sting a bit, but I think I've, one thing that's been valuable is just learning how to let them go a little bit better. And, um, it's let me consider the source a little bit more too and see if that that opinion is valid or not and and honestly I have had some really rudely worded opinions that were completely valid and I have had to learn to see past the the verbiage used in the comment to actually get to the heart of what the person is trying to say. And it's made me better at this. I'm not perfect at it, of course, but it's definitely made me better at this. Now, do I wish those commenters had said what they <laughs> were going to say nicely? Yeah, that <laughs> that's always a little easier to swallow. Um, and I have had a number of constructive comments too that are very very kindly put and also very true so I think this has been valuable for me when I reflect on whether I am contributing to sort of a, a culture of consumption I have to I have to be honest with myself and say yeah I I sort of am. I hope that what I'm showing people is I hope the products I'm showing people improve their lives and bring them joy. And so that's the that's the line I want to walk carefully. Um yeah. So I, I think YouTube has been valuable for me. That long ramble was all about how I'd, I don't think YouTube is, is like always the most terrible manipulative thing. I think there are some really valuable things here. Chiefly the relationships that I've built with a lot of you that I really enjoy and I really feel like I have friends that I didn't have before and I've met some amazing people that I would never have met without YouTube. Um, and I've been able to learn a whole lot about myself. So that's all been really, really valuable. So even though whip and chats tend to be like long rambles about something, <laughs> Well, not even really about something. Long rambles, just in general. I always like to have you guys give me a little feedback. So tell me what you think the kind of pros and cons of your experiences with YouTube, whether you're a creator yourself or a viewer. What are some of the pros and cons for you? And how do you monitor your own use of YouTube and how do you make decisions about both the things that you buy after you see influencers show them and how do you vet information carefully because I think those are valuable skills to know and I think like, do you limit yourself on time? Do you limit yourself on the kind of content you watch? If you're comfortable sharing a little bit about how you manage that for yourself, 
I'd be interested to hear that. Oh my gosh, this is turning out so good from what I can see in person. I hope you guys are liking what you're seeing there too. I want to try this eye, this really colorful eye. This is so cool. I'm an, I might have to make a big crackling chaotic mess of everything and try to find some more of these drills for her eye because this is going to be awesome. But it's got about probably 10 or 15 colors just in that one area. No drill color can make me quite as excited as pink. <laughs> I really love pink. I've always loved pink. It's just a beautiful color to me. Fun fact, did you know that at the um, turn of the century-ish, pink was really considered a boy's color because it was a shade of red? So I know I'm so glad that the kind of blue and pink gendered clothing is a little less popular now than it used to be. Thank goodness. I just think it's kind of fascinating how these colors evolve over time. So pink was a boy's color. Blue was a girl's color. And it's sort of flip-flopped. All right, let's dig out some more colors. This is gonna be so noisy. Might try to find some of these eyeball colors here. Okay. That should be enough colors to keep us going a little while longer. Normally I start my canvases at one edge or the other and go across, but why not just jump into the middle and have fun when you possibly can? Where'd my 550 go? I swear I pulled that purple out. There it is. Whoo! When you guys have like stress going on in your life, do you um sort of lose some brain cells? <laughs> I don't know if I have that many to spare, but I feel like the moment I feel a little bit stressed out generally, I just turn into an imbecile in a way. My memory is decreased. My working memory is not so good. Uh, so the last ribbon chat I did was months ago. I tried to do about maybe one every quarter or so. Just because I don't watch many women chats, I don't have time to watch a lot of them. Even if I want to, I can't. Um, and I think I was working on the Zodiac Maiden from Distracted by Diamonds. I think I tend to pull out these Distracted by Diamonds for my whipping chats because A, I like working on new things. I usually have one, like my Jeremiah Morelli, I work on every night. And so when I do a whip and chat, I sometimes just want to pull out something new. Um, just for a little variety in my life. I hope the skin tones on this canvas turn out good. I hope they're not too red. I know. It's a hard thing to balance. Skin tones are always challenging in diamond paintings. I don't think we have very many of those. I'm hoping we will have a clear eyeball when we're done with this. <laughs> a beautiful rainbow eyeball. It's gonna be amazing. So if you guys have made it this far in the video, maybe I'll, I'll drop a little tidbit in here. <laughs> there are more Genevas coming, coming down the pipeline. So keep your eyes out for that. It's gonna be 
so awesome and Geneva is so great to work with she is a very very kind person um, so like I said I've really enjoyed I really enjoyed getting to know some of these artists and they've all honestly they've all been extremely nice extremely nice So tell me what some of the other diamond painting events are that you guys are involved with. I know I'm not even close to being in the loop on all the things that are going on, but I absolutely love hearing what other people are working on. So tell me what events you're working on. Tell me what canvases you're working on. What artwork? Are you enjoying it? How big is it? Honestly, my favorite part of my whip and chat videos is always reading your comments um, and sometimes I can tell how much of the video people have watched by the comment they leave and there's no problem with that it, there's, it's just an observation there's no problem with that um, because people are welcome to watch as much or as little as they wish People can always come and go, come back. Or if you're just hanging around for tips and tricks videos, hopefully there's a lot of those as well. If you love unboxings, hopefully there's some of those. A little bit of everything, I hope. That's my goal. I really enjoy making different kinds of videos, and so um, I, I have to admit, though, that the tips and tricks videos are my personal favorites to make because I think at heart, I, I'm a teacher. I love, love teaching and I love that aspect of my life. And I always feel like whenever, whenever you teach something, you give other people power to do things that improve their lives or improve their experience. And so those are for me the most fulfilling videos to make. Um, probably followed, actually, I actually love making with Ben Chats too. I don't know if I love watching them, <laughs> but I love talking to people. I love interacting with people. I really enjoy that. The unboxings, I have to say, now, I love all the videos, I do, but you guys are kind of getting like the, in, you're getting the inside scoop when you watch the whip and chat. <laughs> the unboxings are probably my least favorite videos. Um, and maybe, maybe all that correlates to like the amount of work involved versus the return on investment. We all know when we watch an unboxing that we skip ahead to like where we see the whole canvas and then we stop watching. And the analytics always reflect that that's what's happening. And there's no problem with it, none at all. I do it too. Um, and so for unboxing videos, the watch time is always low. Even though there might be a lot of views, the watch time is low. And so, um, the revenue just tends to be lower on those kinds of videos. And you guys know I'm not doing it for the revenue, solely for the revenue, because it, it wouldn't be worth it, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe that's why unboxings are, are lower on the list for me. I don't know. I don't know. I also feel like the whole world does unboxings. Like that's... 90% of what you see anyway. But what do you guys like? What's your favorite? If you're here watching a whip and chat and you've made it this far, maybe whip and chats are your favorite. Because I think you probably have to like a whip and chat to stick with it, you know? I thought of the thing that I hate absolutely the most about YouTube. I love, I love finding people to interact with that are fabulous people, such as yourselves. Like, that's the highlight absolutely right at the top 
of the experience. The creative experience is right up there too. I love, I love the creative side of making and editing videos. It's so much fun to me. Really time consuming, but really fun. And, and I know mine are pretty basic. I'm not even doing a lot of it and it's fun. But the thing I hate the absolute most, the absolute most is the drama. I just can't do drama. I don't understand drama. I think that's, I think that's the kicker is that I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And so I'm kind of baffled by it. Um, I don't know. I guess it, there's not a lot of drama on this channel, I hope. But um, I sometimes feel like because I don't care about drama very much that I'm a little out of the loop on some of the things that are going on. Maybe in a good way. I don't know. I just don't understand it. I was raised very firmly in the camp of like, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's sort of the, the tack that I try to take. I try. I have my moments. I have my moments when I have to sit on my hands and, and not reply to some of those comments just because it's not worth my time to do it. I can tolerate a lot of things actually without without saying anything back, but if I perceive someone's being mean, it's hard to uh, it's hard to ignore that for me. It really is. But I think people forget too. Like technology makes it easy to forget that the person reading the comment is a human being with feelings, and so I think sometimes that is the culprit in a lot of these things. Um, I've also learned that people are never happy. And so I, in a way I feel like YouTube has showed me, has shown me some really positive things about people that I already knew, but just magnified and some not so good things about people that are just magnified. So the positives are that people have a huge capacity to care about others and that people are very, very community oriented and we really need that and we will go anywhere to find it um, and we'll create it online when we can't find it in our real life or sometimes in addition to our real life because people are so in need of connection. I've seen some incredible generosity on the part of both my viewers and other creators that has really impacted me for the better. Um, because sometimes there's no reason for people to do really nice things, but they do them anyway. And that has really made an impact on my life. Really made an impact on my life. And then, of course, I've learned that people are, like I said, never happy. They always want more for less. Um, and they feel like they deserve it. And they feel like they're entitled to it, whether they actually are or not. So I think <laughs> it's a challenge to find our better angels online, don't you think? Like, have you guys ever had the experience of, if you're human, I'm, I'm positive you have, where you've said something online and you're just like, oof. Ten minutes later, you wish you had not said or done it. <laughs> I think that, that must be a universal human experience, I would think. For anyone who spends any amount of time online, this pink is so much fun. I'm really, really interested to see how this is going to turn out. 
this eyeball. I feel like in some way it's sort of the central part of this image. This actually went really fast, this section. Even though it has a lot of confetti. It's round. Round drills are fast. I love round drills. You really feel like you can make a a lot of progress really fast. Oh my goodness, I've been at this for like 50 minutes already. That flew by. When you're hanging out with you with your friends, time flies, right? I better wrap this up pretty soon. You guys don't want to be here all day. So I'm in the process now, since I'm so close to finishing my where stars come from. And I'll definitely put the link to that canvas in the description below for anyone who's interested. And I'll put the link to Robin's Etsy shop if you want to stock for this canvas too. By all accounts, she posts around noon and between 8 and 9 Eastern Standard Time every day. So because she's a solo operation, she only lists in a day what she can ship out quickly. Um, so there is some stocking involved usually to get one of these canvases. But I'm in the process of deciding what to do after where stars come from. I kind of think I'm leaning toward the Tree of Life, the one I just replaced the adhesive on, just because I really want to see how that goes and how it works. Another contender might be getting back into Puck, my Puck canvas from Christmas last year, because I'm pretty sure that would take me a few months to actually finish up. V, we have another shade of pink. Nine, five, six. Um, so that might be another contender. And then I'm really arguing with myself about the Zodiac Maiden 2 from Distracted by Di Diamonds, finishing that one up. That one's massive. It's like 80 by 80 centimeters. And I've started it, but I've really started it just for whipping chats. Like, it's, I haven't started in any dedicated sort of fashion. So if there's a canvas I have, and you know I have it, and it's one of those and you'd really like to see it or you know anything else I may or may not you can suggest it and I may or may not because in the end I have to do what's gonna work for the channel right now but but it always I always listen to suggestions and take them into account I'm also dreaming up some Spare drill projects for Christmas. I've got a few things swirling around in my head right now. I've got some beautiful new coloring books to show since I did a coloring video. The collections always just seem to keep growing, right? <laughs> oh, and I'm having tons of fun with um, a metal puzzle, a metal, one of those metal 3D models. It's really big. Well, actually, it's really tiny, but it's really complex. Sophia and I have been building it in the evenings, so I want to show you that, too. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, well, I'm coming up on an hour here. I might sign off for today. I might sit here and just finish up this last little bit so you can see the eyeball when I'm done with it here. You can kind of see how this rendering looks. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out today. I've really enjoyed hanging out with you. <laughs> and my light pad did just really great. I'll stick a link to this light pad too in the description if you're interested. This is the rechargeable light pad from Elise that I showed on the channel a little bit ago. All right, you guys have a fantastic week. As always, spread some joy wherever you are. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.